up the terrifying guardians? She whispered. I think I know how. I might be able to get some of them to move. But... Only then did Celine discover that she suddenly spoke to only empty air. How had such a giant left her side without her noticing? She looked around, fearful that something had befallen the forest dweller. But in the next breath, there was a powerful roar and a crashing sound. Then a muffled hiss that Celine recognized as one of the monsters centuries dying violently. Immediately, most of the other soldiers pulled the board and sent it back. The soldiers and the players followed suit. They were a few where they were, but now Selene had no She could repeat what she had done in the throne room. Please. She prayed, not quite knowing to whom. This work. Selene. Focus on an area near the entrance, one momentarily devoid of guards. Suddenly, stood at the very spot. One of the remaining monsters started to turn in her direction. Celine focused on what she could recall of the interior, choosing a location near the inner entrance. She hoped that choosing such an out of the way place would keep her from being immediately discovered. Vanished from the first location. Just missed by the sentinel. And materialized a second later into a nightmare. Zayel, it appeared, was about to be eaten. His will was failing. Zael knew that he had but seconds left before his defenses crumbled, and Estrago was able to take everything. After that, it would require only a few short minutes for the demon to finally fully manifest. If he still had his dagger, it would have been different. So closely bound already to the spider, Zael could have use the dagger to better effect against the strongest powers but he did not have his dagger hurry by this did hurry by this heard the howl he focused seeking the cause at the very edge of his perception he sensed the Night Howler. The Rathmanian found it curious that the beast would be just there, where he was barely noticeable. Paribitis did not believe in coincidence. Something was wrong. A moment later, he sensed the presence of another, one familiar to him. The woman. The Lady Selene Nassardo. His bland expression, hiding his surprise. Karyobitis whirled in the direction he knew the woman had to be, yet when he looked, she was not there. Instead, the necromancer sensed her to his right. Yet, the noble woman was not there either. Karyobitis' brow furrowed as he suddenly realized what was happening. But understanding came too late. As a bolt of fire struck him in the chest, sending the armored spellcaster hurling into the wall behind. Shaking, Selene stared at the black clad villain praying that he would not immediately rise. When Karibitis did indeed stay prone, she's turned back to the terrifying spectacle. Sardak's mutilated body lay nearby. The horrible things done to it 
nearly causing his sister to vomit. She immediately understood that they had used his blood, even poisoned, as they would have hers. But even worse to her than that was what was happening to Zael. He still lived, but now lay all but totally bundled up in a large sack, out of the top of which his head and skeletal hand partially thrust, and atop his head, a monster spider so hideous that it could not have been born in the mortal world continued to spit webbing from its mouth and its legs held the necromancer's skull pinned. The spider's eyes glittered and she was certain that it registered her presence. Nevertheless, it did nothing but continue to confidently spin its webbing over its victim. It acted as if it had no worry concerning the newcomer. The noble woman quickly found out why. Movement above barely worn Selene of attack. She pointed up and just managed to catch one of Aldrich's servants as it attempted to drop on her. As it landed in a fiery heap near her, the Lady Nisarda wondered just where the treacherous noble was. Her answer came a moment later as she looked past Sael. One glance at what remained of Aldrich was all that Selene needed to understand that she could hesitate no longer. Worse, from within and without, more of the mutated servants began converging on her location. Now she understood why the beast atop Zael had not been concerned. It had apparently summoned them. The others were wary of her, especially having seen how she had dealt with Caribitis. But their numbers would soon give them the courage they needed to attack. In the meantime, they bought the larger spider the time it required for its insidious work. Selene eyed Zael. All her most successful spells so far had had to do with either teleporting her or unleashing fire, neither of which helped the necromancer. She doubted that she could destroy the spider without killing Zael as well, but if she did nothing... Last Called a welcome, familiar voice. My lady! Shouted Humbart from somewhere. Over to the side! Here! Missing, two of the servants leapt at her. Instead of throwing fire at them, Selene instinctively shifted position. She ended up near Humbart's torn pouch while the two monstrosities tumbled in a confused heap. The others hesitated, not certain how to adjust to this new challenge. Last. The skull commented. Meat trick that. Never mind. Is there anything I can do for Zael? Only one thing. Give him his dagger back. It'll help him. I promise. She quickly looked around. But where is it? That damn Caribitis has it. It's in his belt. I saw it. Eyeing the still farm. Selene hesitated. His belt? Tis possibly the best, only chance. That was all Selene needed to hear. She took one last glance at Kari Bias, assuring herself that he was not dead. He was certainly unconscious. A moment's thought, and she stood next to the deadly necromancer. With a glimpse around her to make certain that none of the creatures was near, she bent to Kari Bida's side and pushed away his cloak. There. Selene drew the ivory dagger from this belt. And, at that moment, Kari Bida's opened his eyes. No. He murmured. I think not. 
His gloved hand seized her wrist. Selene tried to teleport away, but nothing happened. She attempted a bolt of flame with a similar lack of results. I sized up both your abilities. Sorry, Bice explained, as if speaking to an apprentice being tested. And have compensated for them. There is nothing you can do. Selene took a desperate swing at him with Zael's dagger. He definitely caught her other wrist. Nothing. He repeated. Absolutely nothing. 